in module 2 we have seen what are the objectives of the water treatment what are the different treatment unit that is screens aeration sedimentation that we are going to have the various units we have studied along with its flow diagram then we have studied the sources and characteristics of surface and subsurface sources and its suitability then we have seen what is sampling what are its different methods what are the objectives of sampling what are the different preservation techniques that we have then uh, we are we have studied the drinking water quality standard as per bureau of indian standard limits then effect of water quality parameter that is physical chemical biological how it is going to affect that we have studied now in today's class we are going to concentrate more on intake structure right first we will see what is intake structure what are its different types then factors to be considered in the selection of site for intake structure so this will be we are going to study in intake structure what is intake structure what are its types and factor to be selected and for the site selection of intakes then we are going to see what is aeration process what are its types and limitation we have already covered this particular part in our theoretical classes in college okay uh, this is what we are going to study the remaining part in module 2 is only the intake structure part now what is intake structure okay the word is intake now what it does is it is going to take the water from the water reservoir that is either might be lake might be a river it is going to take the water from the reservoir or the source of water and it is going to allow the water to the treatment plant so it is the front or the first uh, thing in your water treatment that is it is meant for allowing the water from the reservoir to your treatment plant it takes the water from the river or a water body to the treatment plant so it is first step in your water supply okay it is the first step in your water supply so so i'll just give you an idea how the where the intakes will be situated okay or how the intakes will be have okay now this is your inline stream of a channel that is nothing but the inclination okay this is an inclination of a stream right why this inclination will be made due to this inclination we can store a good amount of water into our upstream side okay so this is nothing but the inclination and this is nothing but your water storage this is your upstream side of a water reservoir okay here very near to your inclined portion right inclination what we are going to have is we are going to have the intake structure now what is the work of this intake structure in order to allow the water from the reservoir right water reservoir to the treatment plant it takes the water from the river or whatever the water body and it go it is going to suck the water from the water body and it is going to take it to the treatment plant so it is the first thing in your water supply okay now these particular intake structure they may be either constructed or of concrete or masonry okay now these particular uh, uh, intake structures right whenever the water is withdrawn from a surface source such as a lake or a river or a reservoir and the entrance of the withdrawal conduit is not integral part of a dam okay now this is your not an integral part of a dam or any other related structure then intake structure must, must be constructed at the entrance of a conduit the intake structure must be con constructed at an entrance of a conduit the basic function right the basic function of a intake structure is to help in safely withdrawal of water from the source over a predetermined range of pool levels and then to discharge this particular water okay to the withdrawal conduit and from the withdrawal conduit withdrawal conduit will be here from the withdrawal conduit right to the treatment plant okay so i'll explain what are the different parts will be there in the intake uh, now intake structure can be constructed at the entrance of a conduit and thereby helping in protecting the conduit from 
damaged or clogged by ice, by trash, by debris, right? And a simple concrete box supporting at the end of the conduit pipe to huge concrete towers, housing intake gates, screen pumps, and even some, uh, even sometimes living quarters and shops for operating personnel. Okay. Now this particular uh, intake structure is supported with the screens, then a pump. Okay, all these things will be there inside the intake structure. So why this screen will be made of? See, this particular uh, water, what you are going to do is you are going to suck the water here from the reservoir and you are going to the treatment plant. So whenever you are going to take the water from the water reservoir, right here, you will be having the N number of materials. Okay, the N number of materials means might be you are having the uh, dead plants, um, then leaves might be the debris might be the clothes right so these might get enter and it may the clog the working or clog the pipes so in order to avoid that what we are going to have is we are going to have the screens at the at the starting of the conduit okay so this is what your intake structure is i hope you have got what is intake structure now we are going to uh, define it okay now Intake structures used for admitting water from water surface like river, reservoir, lake and conveying it to the treatment plant. It is, as I have already told, it is made up of either concrete or either masonry. Okay. Now, we will be seeing what are the factors to be considered for site selection of these intake structures. Okay. Now, the first point in the intake structure is the site should provide best quality of water in order to maintain the cost of purification see we cannot have the intake structure wherever too much of debris or too much of uh, waste materials that may be getting attached right uh, or uh, getting uh, inserted into the intake so we should wherever we are going to have some good quality of water right there we can have this particular intake structure or else if we are going to take some too much turbid water inside our intake structure then the load on the tree whatever we, we can we may uh, the pumps might be get clogged right wherever we are going to suck it the pumps might be get clogged and the more load will be there on the treatment plant so wherever we are going to have the very good quality of water there we can have situate this particular intake structure now as far as possible, the site should be near to the treatment plant so that the cost of conveying water to the city is less. See, we cannot have this uh, intake structure far away from the treatment plant. If we are going to have it, the main work of intake structure is what to take the water from the reservoir and give it to the treatment plant. So if we the third point is the site should provide the maximum water from the source throughout the year. That means the water, the intake structure should be located at uh, such a place that uh, even though the summer condition will also should have the intake structure should have the sufficient quantity of water why is during the summer season there will be too much of evaporation is going to occur due to too much of evaporation the water level in the reservoir is going to be get reduced so wherever we want to have the intake structure we should locate the intake structure at a such a point that the it should have the maximum of water level throughout the year. It should be free from the effects of flood. The Since we are going to use the pumps inside our intake structure, right? if uh, the pumps are going to be get affected during the flood, then we cannot withdraw the water during the, uh, or, uh, uh, during the flood conditions. So, so we should have these particular intake structure such that it should be away from the effect of flood. Fifth one is the intake must never locate at the downstream side in the vicinity of the disposal. Okay, the intake should not be located at never be located at a downstream side. It should be always located towards the upstream side of the reservoir. Sixth, next is the it should be free from the navigation channels. Okay, uh, it's the if the uh, your uh, intake structures are going to be located. Yeah, during the in in between the navigation uh, traffic then it is going to affect the entire navigation so should be it should be away from the navigation networks it should be located such that the good foundation should be available okay 
so the the your intake structure should not get sink inside the reservoir so the intake structure should be always present on a good foundation the site should be selected such that it should have the possibilities of expansion if you want to increase the intake uh, the your inlet amount to your uh, treatment plant so your uh, intake structure should have always facilitate to have the expansion of the intake structures now next thing what we are going to see is we are going to see what are the different types of intake structure that we are going to have now just now we have discussed the factors to be considered in the design or in the site selection factors to be considered in the site selection of the uh, your intake structure now we are going to see what are the different types of intake structure structures we are going to have so first one is the submerged intake structure submerged will be divided into the concrete blotting intake structure then a rock filled intake structure then we are going to have it the next type is wet intake structure and the dry intake structure then river canal and reservoir intake structure so this we are going to study right now we are going to concentrate on submerged and the uh, submerged intake structure with the concrete block and the rock filled intake structure now first thing is we are going to cover the submerged intake structure as the name is indicating submerged that means this particular intake structure will be uh, submerged into water it is the one which constructed entirely under water such as in structure uh, intake structure we commonly use it for the supply of water from the lakes this particular the diagram whatever you are going to see this particular intake structure we call it as an uh, the submerged intake structure we use utilize it for the lakes here it is with the concrete block and here it is with the uh, rock okay so what is that concrete and all i'll tell you it consists of a simple concrete block or a rock filled timber supporting at the starting end of the withdrawal pipe as shown in the figure so here we are going to consider divide it into the concrete block as well as the rock block here in the concrete block we have supported this inlet conduit on a concrete block that is the reason why we call it as an the uh, concrete uh, simple concrete block sub submerged intake and this particular intake we are going to have it on a rocky bed so that is the reason why we call it as a rock bed intake now uh, we are going to have the intake structure with the bar screens here the, we are going to have the bar screen the why we are going to have the bar screen is this particular we want a good quantity good quality of water to be entered inside our intake structure because this particular water is getting pumped by the pumps so whenever it is going to pump uh, with the help of a pumps right or we are going to suck with the help of a pump if we are having the debris or clothes or any kind of a coarser material then it is going to uh, affect the working of the pumps as well as it is it may block the this particular conduit so we should have the screens in order to prevent the entry of a larger floating element we should provide the bar screen at the starting of our conduit so uh, again these particular pipes it should be kept 2 to 2.5 meter above the lowest level why is if we keep it at a lowest level then more amount of debris that may enter into this particular pipeline so this is the concrete bed the inlet is supported on a concrete bed and here we call it as a rock bed the inlet is supported on a rock platform so that is the reason why we call it as a uh, concrete block submerged intake and uh, uh, then next is we call it as a rock bed intake now we are going to have the wet intake and the dry intake it comes under the intake towers okay the intake towers generally it is used for the large projects on rivers or the reservoir these dry and wet uh, your intake structure it will be used to usually it is going to be utilized under the your uh, large projects such as a river or reservoir okay and wherever there is a more fluctuation of a water level is there there we are going to utilize it the gate controlled the 
openings at various level called ports are generally provided in these concrete towers which will help in regulating the flow through the towers here we are going to have the ports these particular openings we are going to call it as a ports okay we we call them as a ports and it is the entry of water into these ports is dependent upon these particular gates okay we call them as an cylindrical gates okay now uh, if the entry of the ports are submerged at all levels then there is no problem of any clogging or damage by the debris okay now whatever the diagram that you are going to see that is nothing but the dry intake structure okay now what is the difference between uh, we'll first see how the working of this particular dry see here it is going to have one particular gate we are going to have the cylindrical gate and there's a ports the entry here we are going to take the water from the reservoir into this particular withdrawal conduit it is mainly it is dependent upon the positioning or the momentum of these gates if we close this particular gates right there won't be water it is going to be entered into these particular conduit okay so whatever the water it we are whatever the water it is going to be entered if we close it then if the water is there here after withdrawal this may be get dried this withdrawal conduit may be get dried so that is the reason why we call it as an the dry conduit okay or the dry intake structure the water will enter from here the ports and it is going to be here now if we close whatever the entry of water is there that much of water will be there here once we take it out the water will be dried here inside the withdrawal conduit so that is the reason why we call this as an the dry intake structure okay now the next uh, thing what we are going to have in our uh, uh, next type is we are going to have the wet intake structure this is the diagram of the wet intake structure now why we call it as a wet intake structure is you can see these two vertical ports are here these are two vertical compartments in these two vertical compartment the always the water will be there inside these two vertical compartments through these particular ports so that is the reason why we call it as an wet intake structure okay by the way why the water will be there inside these two vertical shafts okay or these vertical ports why it will be there is here we are going to have the two ports and here there is an gate will be there at uh, situated here so always the water will be entering into these particular shafts and when we close it the water will be continuously here and whenever we are going to take it op open here also at entry also two ports here also two ports and in between there is a gate over here okay now when we close it right we completely close it these two particular particular ports will be closed the water will be there here okay and if we take open also the water will enter from here it is going to enter into these particular ports and from these particular ports it is going to be taken into the withdrawal conduit okay so as the water is continuously it will be there whether these particular gates are open or closed right so that is the reason why we call these particular intake structure as a wet intake structure so basic difference is the positioning of the ports right between these the wet and the dry intake structure so wet intake structure it will always have a water inside these particular shafts vertical ports and there in the dry intake it is dependent upon the gates here it is independent of the momentum of the gates the water will be there here inside this intake structure so this is regarding the wet intake structures now difference between the wet intake structure and the dry intake structure is a dry intake and a wet intake tower is that in a wet tower the water enters from the entry ports into the tower and it enters into the conduit pipe through the separate gate controlled openings as i have shown in the last figure in a dry intake tower the water is directly drawn into the withdrawal conduit through the gated entry ports as sh shown in this particular figure so here at the 
dry intake these particular gates are situated outside so it is going to be the it is going to be responsible for the entry of water here into the wet intake structure we are going to have the these particular gate inside so this is the major difference between the dry and the wet intake structures in the tomorrow's class we are going to cover the remaining uh, type of intake structure so in today's class what we have completed we have completed what is intake structure what are the different types of intake structures and what are the uh, site selection or the factors to be considered in the site selection for intake structure and also we have covered the submerged intake structure that is include including the concrete bed and the rock bedded intake structure then we have covered what is a dry intake structure and what is a wet intake structure.